Hi, this is a quick overview of chapter 15 for Physical Science 100. This chapter talks about the wave nature of matter. You've learned in previous chapters how light has properties of both a wave and particles. Now we're going to talk about how scientists discovered that matter acts like particles and waves, which is kind of weird. Waves, um, a property of waves is wavelength, and so they discovered a way to calculate the wavelength of matter using this formula right here. The wavelength of matter equals Planck's constant, which is a very, very small number, divided by the momentum of an object. Remember that momentum equals mass times the velocity. So if matter um, has wavelength, you might be asking, well, if it acts like waves, you know, why don't basketballs or people diffract as they go through doors? Um, let's think about this equation. Um, thinking about our momentum, uh, you know, our, our velocity isn't that important, but our mass compared to mass of like electrons and, and other small particles that do have those wave-like properties, is, our mass is very huge. And so we have a very, very small number over a very, very large number. That means that our wavelength is very, very small. And things only diffract as they go through openings when the slit that they go through is about the same length as the wavelength. And so that's why that doesn't happen. Um, next, we're going to talk about, we're going to skip down and talk about probability waves, probability curves. Um, we have a chart like this, the x-axis down here we can think about as position. And the y-axis here we're going to think about as frequency. And so we have a curve like this, we're going to be talking about the probability of where we can find these particles that we're talking about, these particles of matter. Okay? And so, here where, where it's the highest, the highest frequency, we're most likely to find um, the particle in that region. And then, you know, as we move further away, we have less certainty that it's going to be found in that area, although it is possible. So, um, scientists, what they did is they wanted to find out how, you know, matter acts like waves. So, we can think about a guy shooting a gun through a wall that has two slits. Okay, remember two slits from the light experiments. So, he's shooting all of these bullets, and they go through these two slits. Well, on, on our scale, the bullets will kind of land over here. The ones that go through this top slit will land over here. The ones that go through the bottom slit will land over here. So we have kind of two areas right there. And if we want to make it relate it to a probability curve, we can say that probability curve looks something like that, and then for this side right there. So we're just taking this graph and flipping it sideways over here. So you know, the bullets, we're most likely to find them in these areas with the bumps, okay? When we shoot matter-like, like bullets, okay? So, then what they decided to do is they wanted to try the same thing with electrons. So pretend now that we're going to shoot electrons through these slits, okay? We know that electrons are particles, and so scientists expect to get that same pattern that we got with the two bumps. However, that's not what happened. They got something that looked more like this, which you might remember as an interference pattern. So if we draw the probability curve of this interference pattern, it might look something like this. Okay? Where we're most likely to find it in this location, but then we have these other bumps. Okay? Um, so it would appear to scientists that these electrons were interfering with themselves as they go through these slits. Well, scientists, um, you know, wanted to find out more, and so they thought, well, maybe these electrons are bouncing off of each other and creating that pattern. So then, scientists decided to shoot electrons through one at a time, and that way, when they go through the slits, there's no way that they could bounce off of each other. But they found the same thing. They still got the interference pattern when they shot them through one at a time, which was really, really weird. It confused scientists. So, um, Scientists wanted to find out even more and figure out what was going on. So, 
what they did next in their experiment was they put a little detector on the slits just to try to measure to see which slit the electron was going through, one at a time. And as soon as they started to measure which slit it went through, um, strangely enough, the electron started acting like we would expect matter to behave, and it formed that pattern that we had before with the two bumps. So that's really weird, okay? This is quantum stuff. It's hard to understand, but that's, that's what happens. Next thing I want to talk about is the Heisenberg uncertainty principle. This talks about the momentum or, or speed of, ob of objects like electrons compared to their position. And the uncertainty principle says we can either know a lot about their position or know a lot about their momentum or movement, but we can't know a lot about both of them. It's kind of one or the other. So to prove that point, let's think about a wall over here where we, get, where we have one slit, and we're going to shoot electrons through again, like we did. And we know that since matter has properties of waves, it's going to diffract. So, as it goes through, it will kind of spread out like that, and we can look at the probability curve as looking something like this. Okay? It's most likely to land in this area. But, what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this slit right here a lot smaller, okay? I'm making it more narrow. And so because I'm doing that, I know more about the location of the electron as it passes through. I've limited the area where it is, so I know more about its location. And so since I know more about its location, I know less about its movement. And so I know less about what's going to happen as I shoot it through. Okay. So by narrowing the slit, it's going to make it diffract even more. So we'll spread out even more. And so the probability curve would look something like this. It's, it's a lot more stretched out because we don't know where it's going to land. It has a bigger area um, of probability. And so we're less certain you know, about its motion because we know more about its position.